Hello everybody, welcome back to some mega modded Gungeon. I'm jumping straight into a run. I'm just getting right into it. We had an absolute blast of a run last time. We've been doing some shenanigans with the spin down dice. It's been allowing us to see a lot more modded items than we would usually see. Uh, spin down dice is still in a state where it needs some tweaks and fixes and rearrangings to make it a little better. Do you know what? I'm going to re-roll for a better modded start. I want, I want to try and re-roll to get something halfway interesting. And that there wasn't really, wasn't really that. I'm hoping for two modded, or at least one mod, modded decent passive. So we'll, uh, we'll do a few here. We've not got tons of hegemony credits, but there, you can just kind of spawn them in. So I don't really care. Um, yeah, I just want to kind of get something cool to start off with. Like, what the hell is this? <laughs> um, okay, we got the starter pistol. What? I s what the hell? I've started with two different starter pistols. Um, and we also got this. Um, <laughs> doesn't let anyone get in his way. We got a little fella. And yeah, I got two things called the starter pistol. This one is quite literally like a... Um, <laughs> okay, this is interesting. This one's like a literal starter pistol as in like... To start a race, I think. This one, I don't know what character this is from, but this is also a starter pistol. I'm a bit confused. Oh, I don't know if you've ever had this, but at the minute, my ear is like, it needs to pop. And I don't, uh, it, it just kind of pushes enemies around. It's kind of interesting. One minute, I'm going to have to sort this out. It's terrible. Oh my God, that's better. I don't know why, but my ear was like, do you know like when you go up like high, like altitude wise, and yeah, you just, your ear gets all like sort of, it's not even blocked, but oh god, it was, hor it was horrible. And it just happened to me then. It's like, I've just sat here. There's no altitude here. Oh my god. Oh, push him off. Push him off. Oh, I forget, yeah, that the, uh, these dudes can't actually be pushed off things. That would have been quite funny, though. I don't know, I'm quite liking the starter pistol so far. I mean, it's infinite ammo, so that's good. It's got bouncy shots, too. It's pretty interesting. I, I, I... I have to admit, it doesn't do great damage, but it has infinite ammo, so can I really be mad? Not really. And it is quite literally called a starter pistol, so... Ooh, hello. Wait, there's a jammed boy in here? Can you jam this turkey for me? Yes! <laughs> Not that I needed him jammed, but it'll give me double ammo drops now. Double ammo drop. You can actually see there is two there. The shadow's a bit weird, but there is two. Not that that helped us in any way, shape, or form, but there, yeah, there you go. But yeah, this guy's just gonna bimble, bimble around and push things out of his way. He seems reasonably useful, and he's a, a custom companion, which is something that Never Named has been uh, quite proud of his uh, his creations recently. I don't know if this is one of said creations, but um, I think he was speaking about it the last time I had him on the uh, the series. Basically, he spent a long time taking the process for making custom um, companions, specifically the process of adding in their animations, and he made a way of making it much, much easier and simpler, um, which is a huge, huge help for anyone out there looking to make custom companions, because making them wasn't that hard. Making them actually look good and use decent animation frames was very awkward, apparently. Ooh, we also got the Snaker. Um, so yeah, it's really nice to see that uh, Nevenim took the time to do that. Ooh, I like the animation of this thing. Interesting. Ooh, reload's pretty cool as well. Wow, I think just died there. <laughs> Don't even really know what just happened. Uh, we've also got the material um, emancipation grill. I don't know if we end up wanting to use that or not. I'll see. I'll see. But yeah, at the, at the minute, I'm in sort of a state where I've got a... One minute. I've got to record quite a lot of um quite a lot of gungeon and quite a lot of just youtube in general because i'm going oh hello oh this is what the snake i see i see so basically we can fire through the pellets to gain damage i like that it's not always going to be useful but this i think it yeah it gains bouncy when you fire it through a pellet so that makes it a little easier the pellets seem to cover the room and it can go through multiple as well. Oh my lord. Maybe 
maybe the more that you get per room, the more damage it does per room. I don't know if that's the case. Or maybe it's just per reload. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll sort of figure it out as we go here. But Gungeon has smart bouncing, so the, the, it's always going to bounce towards an enemy. So that'll be good. Uh, let's buy it. Let's just buy a key here. See what we get from our other green chest. Two green chests is pretty good luck for the first floor. And we get ourselves the Gunsling as an emblem. I, I can never remember what this does, but I remember it being good. Um, serves as a helpful buff to the Gunsling. Unfortunately, that's pretty much everyone here. Um, I think that's bonus fire rate. Okay, it's it's just bonus to a to uh, a lot of stats. 10% damage, 10% fire rate, 10% quicker reload, and 10% more range. It, it probably affects a few other things as well, stats that I don't currently have listed, but that's what I'm seeing for now. This is quite an interesting weapon, really. Look how big that one got. I think it adds one extra bounce as well per pellet. <laughs> it's kind of an interesting one. I feel like it's it's a little gimmicky in, in, in the fact that you can't really actively seek out the pellets to uh, gain the damage. But honestly, Gungeon's all about that sort of stuff. Like, how many guns in Gungeon are they that are really gimmicky? Even if their gimmick doesn't really work that well, uh, there's quite a lot. So I, I, don't, I don't dismiss the weapon for that reason whatsoever. I think that's actually a good thing and it adds to its charm. It's got sort of a, I wouldn't say it's a useless gimmick, but it's a gimmick that's hard to use. There's probably a lot of situations in which it's very good. Um, and as well, it seems as though the longer you spend in a room, the the, the more that you're going to see these pellets pop up. I don't know how many can be on screen at once, but so far it seems like a decent amount of them. And they, they do do considerable damage if they, uh, if they hit the boss. Like You can see the damage that we're doing. Look at, look at all these pellets up here. I'm just playing a game of collecting them all at the minute. Look at all these ones. There you go. Yeah, that's actually considerable damage. I think, yeah, the longer you're in a room, the more pellets you're going to see. So it means for bosses, it's actually considerably strong. Anyways, let's uh, let's see if we can find our secret room real quick. I'm not 100% on it right now. I do love this, uh, this old burn boy as well. The burn boy does make me smile. Right, let's just do a blank in here. Ayo. Don't give me trash. You fucking god damn it. Just, I hate that that can happen. <laughs> right. Let's keep her going. Let's keep her going. I'm going to keep using the snake thing. It doesn't have a ton of ammo. But I think that's enough to make it work. Basically, I think this this weapon's gonna be one of those ones that kind of excels in the really in the really big rooms uh, that have very little geometry. But in rooms such as this, you're gonna have to just kind of use it as a standard weapon and hope for the best. Rooms like this is what I mean. In rooms like this, especially when there's a lot of enemies, I can imagine us getting quite a lot. Like I mean, you saw that bounce there. I can imagine us getting quite a lot out of that. You got a one shot there. Ow. It's going to be kind of interesting to see how this uh, this ends up panning out. I, I would love to see some of the syn synergies this thing has. Like, I imagine this thing has a synergy with the Tetris gun, just considering it's uh, both retro games. Um, I don't know how exactly that would end up working. I don't know what the synergy would be. But if I know never named, I imagine there's a synergy there. That's the good thing about Gungeon as well. It's, it's kind of, it's not really like... Isaac, when, when you make a custom item in Isaac, especially like a, a tier mod modifier, you have to think of all these unique custom synergies um, that have like in interesting interactions. Whereas I feel like you still have to do that with Gungeon synergies, but they're a lot more on the nose on this game. The synergies are very much like if you think it should exist, it almost always does. If a synergy makes sense because it's like both referencing the same game or similar games, they're just going to have a synergy. And, and that's that, that, that's a really good thing for developers of mods because it, you can be very reliable and very uncreative. At least you don't have to put a lot of thought into what synergizes with what. Obviously, what the synergy does cr requires the actual creativity. But um, thinking up the synergies themselves is not all that bad because you just go, ooh, I've made a reference to this game. Does the game already reference this? Or I've made something that's fire. 
let's make it synergize with fire bullets. <laughs> and it's it's pr it's pretty good in that regard. You can you can be very um, easy breezy about your synergies. Just make make it a pun or a reference, and it, you'll you'll be good. You'll be fine. <laughs> But yeah, actually making the synergies do something interesting is a little more difficult. But even then, I feel like Gungeon isn't really as well known for that as um, the Binding of Isaac is. Obviously, there's a few synergy forms, like a few guns that actually completely change how they work or what they do based on some synergies. Um, but a lot of them are just like basic. Some of them are even just as basic as adds damage. So you really don't have to super think outside the box when it comes to making some of those synergies because... They just kind of, you can keep it quite basic and quite simple. I do always appreciate when it's something a little more interesting than just a stat increase. But at the same time, you can't really get a stat increase synergy and think, oh, well, that was a waste because it's it's just an added bonus. It's an extra. Um, ooh, that's nice. I'll take that. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's just like an added bonus, a little extra to your to your power. And that, that's kind of another thing I feel it's... It's kind of a problem for people like myself and anyone that's got, like, considerable time in Gungeon, where the synergies that, like, add damage and stuff... I feel like I've gotten to the point of the of the game now where even with, like, the modded rooms, modded enemies and stuff, I know it well enough to where I can essentially beat it with my eyes closed. Not, not literally, but you know what I mean. Like, I know the game well enough where I don't need a good run to win. I can just, like stumble through the game so these synergies that like add extra power and add extra like e extra damage things like that they're really really good when you're like a new player you get it and you're like oh my god this is gonna help so much i can finally get past the third floor sort of thing but when you when you get to my level it just lets you destroy the game faster we've got this this uh chess room again ooh, what's this the try Ooh, hello that's actually kind of interesting um I know that Never Named made a fucking ton of beam weapons when beam weapons became possible. So I imagine this is his. Oh, hello. Ooh, the Sydney Sleeper. Kind of interesting. And Rock Slide. I do kind of want Rock Slide, actually. Rock Slide would be fun. I like Rock Slide as, a, as an active, so maybe I'll buy that. Try Beam. Don't know how good it's got. Oh, that was such a bad hit. Don't know how good it's going to be against bosses, but should be decent. If we can hit all three beams, it seems pretty good. Not obviously something we can guarantee, though. But this is probably the best boss to try and guarantee it. There you go. We got hit a few times there, but I really don't mind. And we got whatever this is. Um, I don't know what this is. Entering a secret room grants fortune and permanent upgrades. Interesting. So we want to be trying to find our secret rooms here. So let's go buy Rock Slide because I do want that as an active. It's a very good active. Thank you. And let's desperately look for our secret room to see what this means. <laughs> this will be a good weapon for finding our secret room just because it spreads pretty wide on the wall. I know that some walls that I'm checking here aren't actually plausible secret rooms, but I'm checking them anyways. To be honest, let's go. Let's go check the talk room. Trock or talk or whatever you want to call him. These rooms have uh, a good chance of being secret rooms. As well as this room here, of course. Hmm, I don't actually know right now. I really want to find it this floor just to make sure we get uh, an idea of what this uh, what this item does. It said rewards and permanent upgrades. So uh, I do wonder what that means. But it's unlikely to be in any of these rooms, I'll be honest. It could maybe be here, but... um going to be against like one of these walls isn't it honestly this thing's so ammo efficient that i don't mind like checking everywhere with this it's going to take a bit of a bit of a bit of time it's gonna be a bit tedious but i think we should do it right uh check through here hmm nothing yet nothing yet Checking a lot of places that it's not even plausible to be in, but I'm just making sure I cover all my bases so you guys can't be like, you missed it right here. I'm probably going to end up finding the cracks and not actually seeing it. I'm looking like a dumbass. Hmm. Nothing so far. Right. I'm losing hope a little bit. 
losing hope a little bit here. I really don't know where it is at this point. Hmm. I checked this secret room, didn't I? Yeah, I did, yeah. It could be in the shop. Damn. I, I literally have no idea. We've checked every wall. Down we go. No idea. I really hate secret rooms in Gungeon, to be honest. Like, compared to the Binding of Isaac, once you get to about, like, five, six hundred hours in Binding of Isaac, it's just second nature being able to find them. You're not always right, but you have a really good inkling of where they could be. This game is like, nah, fuck you. <laughs> you have no idea. You have absolutely no idea, and there's no real way of knowing. It's just check the item room from shop and end elevator, and just hope for the best. They're really annoying to find, so we'll try and find them, but I'm not going to guarantee that we will find any of them. I got you. Skelly's running out of ammo a little bit here. <laughs> My little dude just blasted that guy straight into the hole. Love it. Ooh, you had a jammed bullet there, you cheeky bastard. Right, where the hell... Could our secret room be this time? I'm just gonna check my item rooms, uh, my chest rooms as soon as I enter them. Oh god, that was poison I was stood on there. Whoopsie. So annoying, this little poison pool here. I always forget it's poison. Even, even to this day, I still forget. Just because it just doesn't look like poison at all. Like, I don't know what it's meant to be, like... Oh god. Oh my god, I am playing like trash right now. It's kind of impressive how badly I'm playing. Is this? We're running out of ammo a little bit here. Ooh, hello. Um, nothing here. Nothing on any of those walls. Right, we'll hopefully get a key for that, because red chest is a little spicy. Oh, little baby callers. Oh, that was a perfect rock slide there. You see what I mean? Who's ever been hit by this room? Who? Okay, my, my magician friend is doing a good job right now. God damn it. Hopefully we just find a key, but we're probably going to have to buy one. Oh my god. I don't know what's going on, people. I'm just playing so bad right now. Maybe it's just because I'm playing in the early in the morning. Well, I won't say early in the morning, but earlier than I normally record. Because I'm just trying to record so much Gungeon right now. Gungeon's one of those games that I find a little difficult to record nowadays. I, I still really enjoy playing it, but it's just, it's different than Isaac. I think Isaac, it's so much easier to talk about what's going on in game. Because I, I feel like that game still has a lot of, um, a lot of problem solving and sort of, there's a lot of ways you can still die, even if you're very good at the game, slash have a long uh, period, like sort of a, a long history in the game, a long amount of playtime. I still think it, there's, there's so much that can go wrong and so much sort of problem solving and sort of correction for, for errors made or like bad RNG that you have to do. But it's really easy to talk and obviously there's a lot more characters. But I think it's a lot easier to talk more about the game itself and how it's playing to sort of fill in the gaps. Whereas Gungeon, I feel like it's one of those games, at least for me, where I, I've, I've kind of said all I can say about the game itself at this point, at least in the regard of like tips and tricks sort of thing. Like I can still talk about what, what I'm doing and kind of explain my decisions, but most people at, the, at this point at least are probably watching more so to see the cool modded shit and see like the, the interesting modded items that I get. And especially obviously the, those that developed said mods see, watching to see their um, their creations be played around with, see what, see what I think of them, see if I find any bugs, which I, I normally tend to do, all that sort of good stuff. So it, it is kind of different, and it does make it a little difficult, especially I think the main thing it makes difficult is something that I try to avoid doing whenever possible, although at this current stage I don't really have the choice, um, is backlogging and, and like recording a lot of this game in one session. I tend to try to avoid doing that um, just because it... It tends to lead to worse commentary, but I, it, it really depends on how I'm feeling. Um, get admit one there, nice. Uh, I do like Rockslide, but 
Admit one isn't exactly something I want to throw away. I'm a little upset that we haven't found a secret room yet, but at the same time, secret rooms are a massive pain in the ass in this game, so... I don't mind. Oh, playing like absolute shit right now. I mean, to be fair, I'm playing to this gun strengths, and I feel like playing to this gun strengths is a bad idea. I mean, look at, look at all the pellets, though. There's so many. Kind of insane. I might die. If I die, I'm going to leave it here. But there is a chance. I want to save my blanks, though. I want to try and find a secret room. <laughs> my god. Oh, give me the... Dungeon Eagle? That's gross. Right, let's 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 trash the Dungeon Eagle. Come on now. I'm not I'm not taking that. Um You can have my burn gun. There you go. I'll see what I'll see what it gives me. Take my bones. Hey, vacuum gun's pretty good. I like the vacuum gun. Gimme gimme. Thank you. Right. Still don't know what the secret rooms are. I just they're so they're just such a pain in the ass to find. They're so boring to find. I wish they were a bit more reliable. I feel like that is it's it's rarely worth checking for your secret room outside of the item rooms in end elevator. Like you blank the end elevator if you've got blanks left, you shoot the walls of the item rooms. Otherwise, who gives a shit? <laughs> And it's kind of sad that that's the way it is, but that is the way it is. Uh, excuse me. Thank you. It would not switch to that gun for a second there. Gimme, gimme. Also, at the minute, I've just kind of got trash guns. I mean, they're, they're not bad, but like they're, they're not very room cleary guns. Making things a little more tedious, a little more difficult. I don't know, it'd be, it'd be interesting to hear from you guys what sort of... What's your big motivator for watching watching my Gungeon episode? Like, I know for, for a fact that anyone that makes mods that I play, the main motivation is going to be seeing me use your stuff. Um, I don't know if that's going to be the only motivator. It'd be interesting to know if it's not. I mean, never named, I can imagine it's purely just to see his stuff being used because God knows he hears enough of my voice. <laughs> um, but everyone else... Uh, anyways, um, and like the, the rest of you, are you watching to see the cool modded stuff? You're watching just because I'm one of the only people doing Gungeon YouTube at the minute. Um, well, not one of the only people, but you know what I mean. I'm one of the only one of the people doing it reliably since Retromation stopped, or at least that I know of. Uh, there might be a few other people out there. Um, and uh, or, or is it like just for sort of like the relaxed commentary? Excuse me. Like the relaxed commentary sort of sort of podcasty style stuff where I just kind of ramble while I play. I don't know, it's, it, it'd be it'd be interesting, it'd be interesting, or like I said, is it just to see some of the cool modded stuff? There's, 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 there's a few different reasons I can see people playing, but it's always a bit up in the air to whether, what people are watching for, I don't know, like, I like to think my content's good, <laughs> I like to think my content's decent, it, Gungeon's, Gungeon's probably my, the, the series that I'm least confident in, in terms of how entertaining it is. Just because I, like I was saying earlier, I feel like because it doesn't really have the same impact as it used to in terms of talking about the game as much and this kind of talking normally as I would in sort of the Binding of Isaac videos that I do, I feel like it hinders the quality of the commentary a little bit, at least in my eyes. But people still seem to be watching the series and enjoying it a lot, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just, like, not confident in it for no good reason. There's, there's certainly that possibility as well. Do you know what? Get, get my bad boy in here. Um, certainly that, that could be the possibility there as well. Um, I, I feel a lot... I don't know. I'm just saying, sort of, I feel a lot more confident in my um, in my Isaac series. I, 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 I very rarely walk away from one of my Isaac episodes, sort of disappointed with an episode honestly i have to say I, I'm, I'm never i'm never usually disappointed oh my god this ice i'm never normally disappointed with a with a gungeon episode either but i feel like it's potentially more so than it would be with um with an isaac episode wouldn't let me reload for a moment there i love rolling on the ice it's so funny 
Also, I just feel bad because I've got a bit of a cold at the minute and my voice is a bit groggy, but at the same time, like I said, I have to backlog because I'm going home and I, I want to make sure you guys have videos for a for a few weeks. Well, it's like it's like a week and a half. I want to make sure you guys have videos for that week and a half, so I don't want to let people down. Okay. This thing's running out of ammo, but th this thing is very good. Oh, I, I dudded I that ammo by trying to pick it up with a vacuum then. I'm stupid. You've got to remember you can't do that. Oh, the Phantom Pistol. I mean, not a bad gun at all, but not really what we're looking for. Honestly, we might die here just because I'm playing like trash. I don't, like I said, I don't know if it's because I'm playing early, because I'm a little bit ill, or... <laughs> I'm just really not focused, I don't know, but... We ain't playing so hot. We ain't playing so hot right now. And it's, uh... Oh, God. It's putting me in a pickle. Certainly is putting me in a pickle. Come on, ghosty boy. Take the hint. Hey, there's a free key. Uh, and we've actually got some ammo as well. I'll take the snake gun. Snake gun's pretty fun. Ooh, Kershula. Hello. Ooh, also the dead ringer. I'm Shellacker is just infinite ammo, I'm pretty sure. Like, or at least in a way. Shellha, I don't know. I'd rather buy Shellha if I can, because I've not seen it before. I'm not gonna go to that floor today. Spin down dice is fun, but I don't want to abuse it every single run. Because it just, it, it, it makes the runs a hell of a lot longer. And I, I do like to keep my, um, keep my Gungeon episodes relatively concise. Like, I, I, I want to keep them sort of, without much, I wouldn't say dead air, but much, like, random ramblings and stuff. Okay, we'll take that as well. God damn, that room got so full of pellets. Right, a few chests to open here and there. Oh, do you see that? <laughs> a pellet spawned right in front of that enemy. So I managed to get the big damage boost directly as I hit him, like this look. It's kind of beautiful. Oh, God, I'm actually really liking this gun a lot. The gimmick that I was saying on the, on the early floors, it felt a lot more gimmicky. Now it's feeling a lot more realistic. I don't know if it's because on the later floors you spawn more of the pellets, but it, it certainly seems that way. It certainly seems that way. On the early floors, I felt like I was, like, getting a few per room. Now it feels like I, I wait, like, two seconds and the room is full of a million of them. Also, we are on half a heart right now. I don't know what's wrong with my brain, but today, I was saying I could beat a run with my eyes shut, and now I can barely beat a run with, a, with actually good stuff. If I die, I die. It is what it is. I will try my best not to, but at the same time, it is what it is. I like the way you've used the uh, the proximity mine sound for this gun. <laughs> it fits quite well, actually. Oh, we got the ice pick, and what do we get for our other? Gasoline. G g g g gasoline. Right, away we go. Fight our boss. Oh wait, can we buy the um, the heart thing first? Because it might give us HP. Shell heart. Damn. <laughs> Let's have a look what that does. Uh, armor damage no longer prevents mastery. Oh, that's actually pretty good. Not very useful right now. I mean, I feel like that should at least give you one armor on pickup, maybe. But hey, her. Um, maybe try this. I don't know how good it's gonna end up being. I actually think it could be pretty good. I mean, a lot of the pellets are going to spawn behind him, which is a problem. In fact, I think basically all of them have managed to spawn behind him. Oh, no, there you go. Okay, we can use our bird as a, as a walking ball. Okay, he is he is getting knocked around a little more than I'd like for a, for a, a walking ball. Oh, my God. Bird, stop. There you go. That went, that went considerably better than I was expecting it to. I was really expecting to die there, I'll be honest. Oh, Snail Bullets is pretty good. We actually got quite a lot of healing there as well. Nice, nice. To the next floor. Gotta stay. That was pretty good. Pretty good stuff. Let's keep this moving and grooving. Right, um... Not really got much in the vacuum gun. I need to be sucking up more fellas, to be honest. 
I need to be sucking up more dudes. Fill that bad boy up a little bit. Because it's actually a very, very strong weapon, so... Filling it up as much as possible would be a good idea. Oh my god, I got hit there. Still not found a single secret room, but at this point I've kind of given up trying. Gimme you. Oh, I don't know why. I just forgot how that guy shot them for... I don't know. Like I said, my brain is like not really working at full capacity today. I'm not quite sure why, but... Summer ain't right. Ow. I told you, summer ain't right. Okay, can you guys stop buffing each other? It's very annoying. Why am I immune to fire now? What, what, what gave me fire immunity? I mean, I, I definitely like it. But I'm a little confused as to what gave me it. Oh, probably gasoline, right? Ah, I got hit again. Oh my lord. <laughs> Check what this is first. Blank shop. Hmm, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I might die on this guy, I'll be honest. This is a very cool boss, but it's a difficult boss. And we don't really have boss killing weaponry. I'm really just hoping that I get enough meaty uh, meaty bounces on this weapon to do the job. And my uh, my Gatling gull just helps me out a lot. But this is a, a boss that I, I consider to be quite a difficult one. I don't even know if I can hit him while he's in this phase. No idea. I think I can. Yeah, there you go. He died. Okay, we did live through that. It's a hard boss, sir. Uh, I was apprehensive. But at the same time, we get a lot of we get a lot of goodies for it, sir. So. I don't remember. Maybe, maybe we should use the icicle for room clears here. Ooh, this thing has slow projectile speed. I don't think I want to use that actually. Very slow. I'm really liking this thing to be honest. Snake gun is just fun. It's like it's like I'm playing a mini game every room. I like it. Right, keep moving. Ooh, we got a long door. And it's locked. It's still annoying that the NPC doors can be locked. At least it's not like locked shops. Do you all remember locked shops? Ugh. Ooh, that was rough. And key strats as well. Gungeon was weird back in the day. Gungeon was weird. Before AG and D, Gungeon was in a proper... Oh, God. I got hit so many times then. Gungeon was in a proper rough state. Like... You used to have to leave keys on the floor to make sure keys appeared in each shop. Key doors could be locked. Ammo drops were basically one of the rarest things on the planet. <laughs> like, you used to have to basically use your starter pistol until floor three if you wanted the ammo to actually progress through bullet hell. It was kind of ridiculous. And and then, like, AG and D obviously changed a lot with the loop pool. And then, like, obviously the synergies was a big deal as well. It's just kind of crazy how much the game changed. Like, the game was still fun back then as well, but I think it was a lot less fun over time. I think if you played it for long enough to to recognize those patterns and, and be, be at the skill level where you were aiming to do a bullet hell run every run, that really created a very tedious gameplay loop where you were you, you felt like, or at least I felt like, I was constantly um, constantly trying to conserve ammo. It was such a pain in the ass. Oh, no. What a death. I thought I could roll across that. Either way, whatever. It's a short run, but there you go. That happens sometimes. Hope you guys enjoyed nonetheless, and I'll see you guys in the next one.